yes, yes, yes. Um, so there's even levels to this sampling shit. Is the <laughs> best way that I can put it. Please, to please, please help and, me understand. Well, the best, the best, the best samplers are the people who did what got done. I, I, I need to pull up. I think maybe D Dot and Puff did this record. Um, like for me, and you know, I know we talked some mob beat beat. Mm -hmm. Have a great sampler because you'll know where the sample's coming from, but the way that he'll freak the sample or the part that he'll pull the sample from. So it's Kanye. Mm -hmm. That's one of Kanye's gifts yeah. too. His ability to pull that right part of the sample and loop it at the right point. Like Otis. You know what Otis? Mm -hmm. You know the song record that it comes from? I mean, that's an example of great sample. You feel yeah. me? Because yeah. we all that song, Try a Little Tenderness, mm -hmm. like we we all I know love that. that song. I love Otis Redding. Right. He's one of my but, very favorites. Um, but listen to how he's freaking. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Please don't tease. He's stretching it. He's yeah. pulling it, looping it. It's how you freak it. It's one of those style things. It's like, well, every point guard in the NBA can dribble the ball well, but then there's the way Steph Curry and Kyrie handle the ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I would very much, uh, from a production standpoint, it's like a point guard who has the illest handles, mm -hmm. you wow. know, like, so, you know, let me see who did this. They Kyrie with the handles on the sink. You feel what I mean? Right. It's like, no, 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 best of the best in terms of how they freaking it. Um, it's both because you, know, so you have to have both pieces, right? You have to be able to have like the technical ability to do it, like the right. actual handles, but you also it, have to know like where you're from. going and have a vision for what's happening. To yes. It, it's, it's, it, I think, before even the vision, I think you have to have the ear for it. Like you're, you know, producers are listening to literally vinyl records. You know what I'm saying? It's still mm -hmm. around these times, 95. So they're still listening to like old school vinyl records, you know, mama and auntie and uncle mm -hmm. and pop right. vinyl records. And like literally listening to these records and figuring, you know what I'm saying? Where mm -hmm. the, where am I going to, and, and, and it hits you. It's just like the inspiration when you write a yeah. song and you know what it's like when it's sitting yeah. there and the it just it's like drops on you. You're it's like, a, oh. the producer when they hear it, they're like, "Hold on, stop that. Play that back. Hold on, hold on, run that back." And they'll get over there on the vinyl and start. Hold on, let me scratch. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. That's how that's how hip hop started. Was taking beats and break loops from disco records and chopping mm -hmm. them up and making them funky, giving yeah. the artist the master of ceremonies time to jump in and say, "Look, that was the whole point of it." And so that's what I mean. It's the person with the yeah. illest handles. It very much goes back to the core of hip hop to a degree because hip hop's based on, quite frankly, Club Stubblefield, uh, Clyde Stubblefield's, uh, you know, drum patterns and right. kicks and loops from, yeah. you know, James Brown. Band. That's pretty much what hip hop is based on, yeah. you know? So, it, you know. I want to interrupt you for a second. I want to tell you a fun, a fun sidebar story. We should, I should yeah. say this for a different episode, but um, the, I forget what, it wasn't Clyde Stubblefield, but it was one of the disco. Um, bands um dave grohl has said in interviews the drummer for nirvana and now the lead singer for the foo fighters um said he stole the the like the disco flam beat the like the four on the floor beat um you, you see that in a lot of early nirvana songs um and he, he he recounts the story of telling one of these guys i wish i remembered which one it was um telling him like you know th just when he met him like thank you like this, I've stolen, taken so much, from, not, not in a, in, you know, in a respectful way, but like I have used a lot of that. And the guy just told him, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's that. So that kind of beat is the disco flam beat, you call it the four on the floor, is like the, is the base for a lot of popular music, not just hip hop and disco. But that style has been taken in lots of other different directions too. Mm. And they, you know, that, that 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 that's good backstory stuff. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I think you know that I'm a Nirvana fan and a Foo yeah. Fighters by way of Nirvana, just mm -hmm. kind of like following. You know, what I mean, because I literally didn't listen to the Foo Fighters, so I found out that like Dave Grohl was like mm. the lead I was like, oh, I was like, oh shit, like that's the dude from Nirvana. That's the yeah. Nirvana. Like the drummer's a front man. I was like, that's so dope. Yeah, you know he can he can he he made the whole first record. Well, this is not the point of this episode at all. But he made that whole first record by himself. The one with like the gun thing on the front of it. That, that's all, that's all him. He's playing all the instruments on it. Really? Mm, yeah. 
he made that in, sure. not in his basement or his garage or something like that. Yeah. Well, you know, th- there there is truly kind of like no ideas original. We're kind of all pulling from something, yeah. from something else. You know, there you know we're we're our own sources of inspiration musically, mm-hmm. and so I think hip hop is just literally the only one that's rooted in literally taking somebody else's actual record, like the mm-hmm. story that you're telling. Like, how about this? Like that story is kind of like. And don't take this the wrong way. It's kind of mundane to me because it's kind of like, well, that's hip hop. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I was just giving you another example of it. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like, I mean, mundane in the sense that it's like, oh, well, I've heard that so many times. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That it's kind of like, oh, no, I totally understand that. And it totally fits. We do this shit regularly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, even me, I'm, even me as an artist. I would think about like, you know, my favorite artists and beats that I would want to hear them rap over like mm-hmm. samples. And, Ooh, what if, you know, we had these arguments all the time, like, you know, about, oh, what if such and such were to rap over the such and such beat? You know right. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, how would they sound on that? Right. That's just kind of part of our culture. That's the mixtape game, too. You yeah. know what I mean? Taking this beat over here and these rhymes over here, you know, doing a nice little blend. Like one of my favorite blends is... um. You know, and this kind of go, goes back and coincides with the same time frame is mm-hmm. um, Prodigy's verse to Shook Ones 2 over the Wu-Tang Clan and the, the Fuck With beat. Oh, oh whoa. Fuck. Yeah. And it comes in, it's like, and it's got the little mixes and it's like Prodigy's just voice is just there mm-hmm. and the beat's not playing yet. So you're here, I got you stuck off the real mix. We be the infamous, you heard of us, official Queensbridge. And then the Wu-Tang Clan and the Fuck With beat starts coming in. Mm-hmm. like and it just kind of builds up this momentum and you're like it's one of those things that you even while you love hip-hop like we even they even like it's like no 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 that beat wasn't even two years old when it got stolen they put prodigy's vocals over it. mm-hmm. it's part of what makes this shit so fun and innovative yeah. is the take it and mix it and mission and match it and put it together so i i would equate it to the ball handler in the nba yeah, yeah. It's like, ooh, it's like Tim Hardaway with the killer crossover. It's like, oh, did you see what he did with that sample? Mm-hmm. Like, I know you've been watching the uh, According to Hip Hop show, obviously, when I've been yep. talking about uh, the legit sample from King's Disease 3. Mm-hmm. And I've been like, oh, that was right in front of our face. I know you may not be familiar with the movie, uh, the, the Five Heartbeats and Eddie Kane. But well, yeah, I know so, the name, but I don't know much about it. Right. Sure. It's so infamous in black culture, that mm-hmm. movie. In that scene, I was like, oh, no. I was like, that sample was right in front of all of us and we missed it. You know, mm-hmm. it's a stroke of genius. It really is. And we think in those terms in hip hop about something like that. It's like, ooh, that sample was right there. And nobody took it and freaked it yet. And then Hit Boy did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And now it's a thing. That's part of yeah. the culture. And so that's what I mean. This record, one more chance is a flawless victory because even the sampling is flawless. Yeah. Like everything flawless about the record. The vocals are flawless. Everything. It's a perfect record. It's one of them. It, you know, um, I think Dear Mama is a better record, but it's not as, you know, it wouldn't check as many boxes as One More Chance, even though I think it's the better song. That's why I mean, Pac's content can just overwhelm even the greatest of records, and that's mm-hmm. why I would think Dear, tell you Dear Mama is the better record. But there aren't too many hip-hop songs ever been made that, like, check all the boxes at One More Chance. Right. Okay. It's, it's like, literally, like, it's like running to the calf line and you come in first place in all the events. That's nuts, yeah. It doesn't happen, yeah. Right. It Winning happen. the decathlon like, usually is like what LeBron does, is coming in second or third in all of the... Right. You should have to come in second, third, fourth, and everything. You might win gold in one or two of the events. You know, yeah. But, you're, but yeah, so one more chance is him, like, you know, running the game. And it's like, what do you want? You want a hit record? I got you. You want to hear me when I'm over a dope beat? Go sample. Got you. Got the hook down? We mm-hmm. got you. Rhyme pattern? Got you. You're going to be entertained? I got you. Like, what do you want out of a rap song? Mm-hmm. All of it. And he's got all of it. Yeah. Got all of it on this record. So, back to your notes. Hey, y'all. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you love this, check out this video right here. It's another one that where Coop and I are talking about how two songs go together that you wouldn't maybe think go together. So, thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.